Hey y'all, so I want to come to y'all real quick and show y'all how um, I added or how to edit quickly on Shotcut. So Shotcut is a free editing um, software, it's free editing software or a free editing app or however you want to word it. Um, you could just put in Shotcut Video Editing. I'm not sure like the exact website. I'll link it in the description box below. But uh, yeah, I use this and it's free and it works for me. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna download Shotcut. Then you wanna go ahead and you're gonna open up Shotcut. I would suggest if you like are a YouTuber or if you're just somebody that you know likes to do a video editor or whatever, um, you wanna make sure that you have specific places where things go. So for me, what I like to do first, I like to name it. So I'm gonna save it as it's automatically gonna go into this folder, which is my SL video edits, cause I'm editing this video for SL or Second Life. So I'm gonna name this Tropical Birthing Area. And so then you'll save it. So this is where the edit will go. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna open your file. Um, my thing, so like I have a YouTube videos folder and then I have a SL YouTube. It's all of my Second Life stuff and I redirect it. Anytime I edit off of, I use OBS to do the screen capture and then I edit it in soft and um, shortcut. OBS is a free um, screen recorder as well. So I go into SL on edited videos and then this is the video right here so when you get here when you see the video here you want to go ahead and click that plus now real quick if you are bringing in more than one video you won't have to hit this plus but if you're only bringing in one video or one picture you are gonna have to hit this plus to add it to your playlist queue so like for instance so say if I wanted to do these two they'll just automatically go in. However, if it's just one, go ahead and remove, right click, remove. If it's just one, you're gonna have to hit the plus button. Let me show you again. It'll show here, and then you just wanna hit the plus button to add it. So just for the sake of you knowing how to access these things, if you don't wanna drag and drop, you're gonna go ahead in this little hamburger menu right here um, you're gonna go to track operations and then you're gonna add a video track. It's gonna be, this is the video track. If you add another video track, it's gonna say V2 and things like that. Um, and because I know I'm going to be adding some sound to this, I'm gonna go back to track operations and I'm gonna click add audio track. And that's gonna go right up under it. So first thing I wanna do now is I wanna take this and just drag it down here. I'm gonna make sure you get it right up in the corner like that. So because I am gonna be doing a, and then you wanna say, because I am gonna be doing sound over this, I'll go ahead and just mute the sound here. Word to the wise, you wanna make sure that you're always saving it. Now there are times, I will admit that sometimes um, Shotcut will crash and when I bring it back up, my work is always still there. It might've been maybe the last things that I didn't save, I'll have to redo. So like if I did a lot of cuts and edits and I didn't save it and it crashed, then those cuts and edits will be lost. So you just want to make sure that you're saving it as you go along. You always want to make sure you have the latest version of Shotcut. When the latest version comes out, it'll pop up here. So like it'll be something right here that'll tell you like it'll look just like this, but the wording will be like there's a new version of Shotcut. Click here to access it or whatever. So now that you have all of that set up, you can go ahead and edit now. So one of the, two of the main buttons that I use the most is this button. This button is the split and playhead button. And this button is gonna be your, your friend because this is how you're gonna be able to cut the, um, the video. So like say if, I like to highlight it. Now another thing, with this, wherever this is, whatever part is highlighted, um, that's where, that's the part of the video that Shotcut is gonna be editing for you. So I like to always make sure that whatever file I'm on or whatever video I'm on, if I got more than one, that I highlight it so that you see the red bars. That's gonna let you know that whatever cuts you do is gonna cut on this 
um file and not like any other if you had like different videos that you wanted to overlap or something like that so like for this one we can do it right here so if i didn't want this part then i would go and i would click this i would split it at playhead and when you split it at the playhead if you can see it's like a demarcation line if you ever make a mistake and you cut something and you're like oh no you know i didn't want to cut that or i didn't like that cut you you have two options you could do undo which will put it back or you can do rejoin with next clip and that'll put it back as well so i'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of editing out in the other button that I tend to use a lot is, well the other two buttons is my copy and paste button. These buttons I mostly use like when you see little slides before the video starts, I'll use this and I'll have like another video file. I'll do like another track operation and then I'll add another video track. And so say if I wanted this part and then I wanted this part for my beginning of my video. So I would take it like that, but then right here, I'm gonna make sure that you can't see it and you can't hear it because this is not, these are not clips that I want to be added, that I want to be flowing in the video. These would be clips that I would want at the beginning of the video. So that's pretty much what I do when I'm adding like parts of the video to the front of the video or like a, a teaser, if you will. And also sometimes with shotcut, cause shotcut is not perfect. Because shotcut is not perfect, sometimes with shotcut, when you hit the undo button, sometimes it'll seem like the screen will freeze and then it'll unfreeze. Sometimes the screen will freeze and crash. I'm not even gonna lie. It's a free, it's free software. So I'm sure a lot of people use it. It's not gonna be perfect, as perfect as if you were using another one, a different type of software that you actually were paying for. But when I tell you this works for me, this is what I use every single time for every single video. You can upload it in 4K. It does, it, it works well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet and do a little bit of editing and I'll see you guys in a minute. So real quick, when you are coming to a part of the video that you cut and you don't want it anymore, you can click this button, which is a cut button, or you can right click and you can ripple delete, or you can just cut it. I do, I just do ripple delete because to me it's the, it's the same thing pretty much. You just delete the video. I'm very new to Shotcut, so I know that there are so many more features and so many more things that Shotcut can do. Um, I'm pretty basic with the things that I do in Shotcut. So if you want like a more advanced video, I'm sure that they have like, um, I know that they have a lot of other videos on YouTube that um, give you the experience that you're looking for as far as like learning different techniques and things like that with Shotcut. But today we're just focusing on the basics. Another thing is when you are cutting out parts of the video, what it will have you do is it will have you go, it'll put you in a different spot. So you'll have to go back to the last part that you were in. I'm sure it's a way to fix that, but I simply just don't know how yet. So I'm gonna delete this. You see how the cursor stays here, so I gotta put it back here so that I can start from the point that I cut it. So when you find a video part that you like, because you want it in the video, we want this, this part is gonna be at the end. So for this sake, I am going to cut it. Now, if you didn't wanna cut it and you just wanted to copy it cause you wanna keep it in the video, like if you're doing edits where you're doing a preview in the beginning, you're gonna copy it. You're gonna have to put your cursor where you want it to be, where you want the video to paste to, make sure that the I don't know what these are called, like the slot or whatever is highlighted. So you know that this is where the video is gonna go and then you just paste it. So it's right here. So when you are dealing with a point in Shaka where you see a scene that, or a clip that you would like in a different part of the video, what I do, of course it right got different ways, but this what, this what I do. So what I do is I'll go and add another video track. 
that video track will be here i don't want it here i want it here so i'm gonna put it up under the first track so like this real quick this is a clip of the observation deck that'll be for the birth but i want this to coincide with i believe this is the clip is this the clip yeah with this clip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this clip and because i want this clip to be up in here somewhere well actually i want this clip to be before so what i'll do is i'll do this this is where it can get a little bit tricky but don't let it do don't let it do too much to you so with this when you have instances like this what i have to do which i haven't found an easier way to do this i'll go and i'll do selection select all on current track normally when i'm doing when i'm doing videos this type of thing doesn't happen so you want to select everything that's on this row but i want to go ahead and hold my control button down and click the first one and what that's going to do is that's going to deselect but it'll let keep all of the rest of this selected um and then i'm just going to pull it down like that so now when i look at it this will go before this and another thing if you find that it's somewhere in the video if you plan the video back before you do any more edits to it just to make sure that it's cohesive when you delete a part for me when you delete a part might be a different way to fix this but it's gonna move this whole track so you're gonna do ripple delete it's gonna pull this back to the front but you see the little piece that was up in here i'll have to now put this back there not a big deal if it was a bunch in here i would just grab the whole row and then just reposition it when you have parts like this where this track was here and then i moved it up because because i believe i'm gonna delete it but i didn't want to delete it until i was sure so my battery died so when you have a space like this like i was saying when you have a space that's open like this in order to close this space up because now i know that this piece I'm not gonna use, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that. We're gonna highlight this row. And then when we get up in here, for this piece, you're gonna right click, and then you're gonna ripple delete, and it's gonna bring in the video for you. Then of course, you wanna save and keep editing, you guys. So now that I'm done with all of my cuts, I don't want this row, so I'm gonna highlight this row. I'm just gonna right click, and then we're gonna go to track operations, and then we're gonna go to remove track. They also give you a list of hotkeys. I'm not about to go through remembering all of that. I gotta remember enough hotkeys for different programs. I don't wanna do it here. So yeah, so another thing is when it's time to actually do like for me, aesthetic edits. So like for instance, with this one, I want it to go slower. So it's a properties tag, and you're gonna click the properties tag. The speed is set at 1.0, cause that's just like normal speed. I wanna take it down to maybe a seven. And what'll happen is this track will adjust. Now, if it was tracks that were next to each other, then it won't mess with the, the tracks that are in the line. But when you are doing this, it will, because you want it slower, sometimes it'll make the track, the track will end up being longer. So it'll be longer like this, but that's okay. So you'll go ahead and click save. And then for me, even still, that's long. So if you see this little space, this little space will get filled up, but it's not gonna push anything down necessarily. It's not gonna push anything down. It's just gonna become slower within that space. So I wanna bring it down to a five. So it's probably gonna close in that gap, but then it'll still give me the slow motion that I'm desiring for this video. Okay, so now that I have all the cuts that I want, I got everything in the order that I wanted in. Now we're gonna make it be more cohesive or look more cohesive.
So this video started out at 11 minutes and 35 seconds. I got it down to 31 seconds. So now that we have everything that we need and we know that we want this part here, this clip up here, we've made a space for it already. So in order to create the transitions that you want, um, when it's gonna be one consistent flowing clip, you're gonna wanna pull this down here because if it's up here, if the clip is still up here, it's not gonna allow you to transition the way that you wanna transition. It's gonna make you have to do like um, fade-ins, like fade-in the video. And we don't wanna do that within the video unless we're going from like clip to like, if we're going from like a talking clip to like a video clip, like a talking clip to like a audio clip. So we want to go here and what I want is I don't want it to just start, just start right out the way that it's starting. So what I want to do is I want to go to filters and then I'm going to click the clip that I want to add a filter on that I'm going to add and I'm going to fade in the video. So now what will happen is it'll be a nice little fade in transition. Now when you want to add transitions to these clips, what you do is you're going to simply drag until you see that X and you can play back the transition to see if you like the way that it transitions. If you feel like it's transitioning too slow or too fast, then you want to spread it out a little bit more and then it'll be a different type of transition. So instead of it just popping right in, it'll kind of fade like a light fade into the next scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade all of these to the front and we'll frontwards like this. Then we'll do this one. And then we'll do this one. And then we'll do this one. So then we'll save it. So for me, my thing is my clue or my cue that the fade is gonna be a decent fade, like a more slow down fade is when you see that X there. So what I want to do is I just want to find any one of these. I like that. First try, that don't normally happen. So see, y'all give me some good luck. So what you do is you're going to go ahead and pop that in. You're going to save it. Because it's going on Facebook, it's not too much of an issue with um, the music, I don't think, I don't I don't post a lot on Facebook, but anywho. So with this one, you still want to fade in. So because this is a audio clip, you're gonna go back to filters. If you're in playlists or something, you're gonna go make sure you're in filters, make sure the clip that you want is selected, and then you're gonna click the plus, and then you're gonna fade in audio. So up here, we did a fade in video because this is a video. Down here, we did a fade in audio because of course it's audio. So now, Make sure you save. When you start it, it'll fade in the sound. Okay. So then when you get here, because this is the end of the video, we also want to do a fade here. So I'm going to do fade out video because we faded in the video at the beginning. We want to fade out the video at the end and we want to do the exact same thing to the sound. So you're going to make sure that your cursor is where you need it to be and you're going to make sure that this is highlighted. The clip is going to be highlighted. And then you're going to go ahead and cut. And then this part, you're going to go ahead and delete it. Now, if you look at the video and you see that it's like this, where it's still a little bit of that green there i hope you guys can see this like it's like a little space here all you have to do is just see that cursor when you see that and then you could just like pull it and get it to where you need it to be so once you do that you want to also fade out this audio as well so you're going to go make sure you're in filters make sure the clip is selected you're going to click the plus sign and then you're going to fade out the audio so we got Fade, you got a fade out video at the end, fade out audio at the end. We got our transitions at the beginning. We got our fade in for the video. And then at the end, we got our fade out for the audio. Then you're gonna save it. You can go to export. And I basically, I don't click any of these. I used to, but I just, I don't. Um, I upload everything in 1920 by 1080p. My Kodak, I kind of leave the Kodak like this, um, unless I'm really trying to 
get like a super super crisp video for my second life then i'll change the quality and the gop and all of that stuff on here but for the sake of this video i'm not gonna get into that um i'll leave the audio the same and things like that now when you are doing audio for like a voiceover and things like that i made you can go into here and then i have a the gain volume option and what i did was i made a preset so i have my preset for my speaking voiceover volume and my music voiceover volume so when i do um if i do a voiceover i'll change the speaking volume for the voiceover to this and then when i add music in the background to like a speaking um like to my voiceover i'll change the music to this so that way when i'm speaking the music is not going to be over my talking you'll be able to still hear me clearly but also be able to hear the music in the background if you have a video that you're not going to be using the sound for and you just want to use the image and you're going to be putting music over it you want to make sure that it's muted otherwise the sound will play with the actual audio clip and we don't want that so we're going to go ahead and export this file once it's finished exporting you guys i'll go ahead and show you guys the results <laughs> 